all those women chained to their computers or busy with clients or patients all day with little time to exercise, I want to share with you how I ditched the fair diets, jumped off the exercise hamster wheel and became stronger, fitter, slimmer and happier at almost 52 than I was 10 years ago, plus fixed my back pain and leaking bladder in the process. So um, I am Tracy Sider. I am a movement and posture coach and audacious ager, creator of the 12 week reshape method program and host of the perimenopause and menopause club. So I just want to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I got to where I am today. From a pretty miserable and hopeless place 10 years ago to joyful, confident, and strong. And to show you that there are other options for aging well and looking and feeling great. If you're open-minded enough to step out of the conventional exercise box. You see, 10 years ago in my early 40s, I was at the height of my editing career, but chained to my, my computer and achy all over. I was always on some stupid diet or other and forever trying to put exercise into my crazy work wife and mom life and feeling guilty when I skipped workouts because life got too overwhelming and busy or I was just too damn tired at the end of a hectic day to change into my workout gear and head out to the gym or the yoga class. And I was feeling increasingly frustrated and dejected because the exercise I was doing wasn't making a difference anyway to my shape and it was just making my back and hip pain even worse. I also see now that I was suffering from perimenopause symptoms like weight gain, anxiety, fatigue, low libido, heavy periods, pelvic pain, crap sleep, and general revoltingness. Tell me if you experienced any of those in the comments. But I'd never heard of the word perimenopause and had no idea that my diet and exercise choices were making those issues even worse. So when I eventually found an approach that worked and got me looking and feeling awesome in my body again, I closed my editing business and retrained as a movement and posture coach. Um, so that I could share the love and give hope to other women over 45. That it's not all downhill from here, that you don't need to age feeling tight and sore and frumpy and awful in your body, and that audacious aging is possible for you too. So you may be thinking, well, like, what is audacious aging? Well, for me, it's aging where you feel powerful, energized, and in control, but also grateful, light, and fully at ease and at one in your body and in your life. It's about getting in true alignment with your body, with your mind, and with your deeper self. Audacious aging is about rejecting the belief that aging means you must accept an achy, creaky, changing body. And it's about doing all the right things to get a strong, agile body to match your strong, agile mind. So let me know in the comments if that is something that you want. You see, menopause is our third reproductive age, or as I like to call it, our third age. There's pre-puberty, our reproductive years, and then our non-reproductive years, where we'll spend the next 30 plus years of our lives. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> when I first heard that, I kind of had a freak out. Um, that is a lot of years to be cranky and dry and sore and feeling old. Okay, or not. We can spend the next 30 years in our new menopausal state wondering what the heck happened to us, wondering why the diet and exercise that used to work in our 20s and 30s isn't working anymore, and wondering who the person is that is staring us back in the mirror. Or we can live our third age, which we have the privilege of living with audacious wonder. So for me, audacious aging is not about turning back the clock or looking for anti-aging fixes. I can't bear that word anti-aging. It's about embracing and owning the aging process 
which not all of us have the privilege to experience. And it's about being armed with knowledge about our bodies, about what works for us at this aging stage so that we are empowered and in control of our aging process instead of feeling like we are at the mercy of these passing years. For me, audacious aging is about being optimistic and confident that I can handle anything that comes my way, be it climbing an actual mountain for adventure or fun or having the emotional strength and stamina to handle the mountain of stuff that a sandwich generation of women need to deal with every single day, okay? Give me a hands up if you're in that sandwich generation. Now, we call it the sandwich generation because we're looking after kids, perhaps even grandkids, right? No matter how old they get, they still need us. But we're also caring for our elderly parents and relatives all the while, you know, trying to keep our marriages fresh and being at the top of our work game. That is a lot for us to deal with. But I want to share a secret with you. The secret to audacious aging that few people know about and that even fewer people are trained to teach. And it's the whole reason why I closed my editing business and set up this group instead. And it's the reason why I created my Reshape Method program and I'll dedicate my days to coaching the fabulous Reshape Method members and sharing free trainings and resources in this wonderful Facebook group. And I did that because I wanted other women who are struggling like I was to know that there is a doable and effective way to age well and to look and feel better than you ever thought possible. And that does not involve going to the gym, sweating and counting calories. Okay, I have done it and the many women in my Reshape Method program are doing it too. Am I special? No, I'm definitely not special. Do I have a special approach? Yes, I do definitely have a special approach. You see, the same old eat less, exercise more approach that we've been doing for years is totally inappropriate for women over 45. So let's just stop it already, okay? Let's just stop it and start to do movement that works with our changing menopausal bodies and not against it. So I want to show you that exercise does not only mean dressing in Lululemon, going to the gym, riding your Peloton, pounding away on the treadmill in the basement and checking that you're reaching a certain heart rate for so many minutes or trying to bend and stretch your tired and achy body at your hot yoga or Pilates class. So let me tell you how I came to my radically different approach as my wonderful client Donna calls it. So like many teens in the 1980s, I was obsessed with Jane Fonda style aerobics, thong leotards, leg, leg warmers, and staying skinny. <laughs> Did you do any of that? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Um, when I look back on pictures now, that was just such a load of crap. Okay, I was already perfect. And I wish I could give young Tracy a big hug and some of my menopause wisdom because that would have saved me so much grief. You see, in my mind and screaming at me from every cosmopolitan magazine cover was the message that I could not be thin enough or have big enough permed hair, right? <laughs> that I needed to diet, work out hard to feel the burn, <laughs> to keep the shape that gave me my fragile sense of self-esteem. And all this shaped my beliefs around diet and exercise and body image through my 20s and 30s. Let me know in the comments if you were as impressionable as me. It's, it's hard to admit right now, <laughs> I'm on later age, but that was it, right? Um, so at 18, I left my hometown uh, of Durban in South Africa. So think Miami weather. And I spent a year in ruralish Canada in Saskatoon. I suppose it is ruralish. <laughs> we have some members in the group in Saskatoon, so <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> well, it was ruralish back then, right? Um, as an exchange student. So think Miami weather to 
frigid Arctic. So funnily enough, I landed up immigrating to Toronto with my husband and daughter 21 years later because life is just kind of strange that way. And that year I packed on the pounds, all right? While that exchange year was a phenomenal experience, like many young adults who leave home for the first time, I packed on the freshman 15, which is the 15 pound weight gain um commonly experienced by first year students and for me it was more like the frozen tundra 20. so i started university back in south africa and before i knew it i was firmly locked in the cycle of bad yo-yo dieting and binging it was this kind of like all or nothing with my eating and exercising it was truly it was verging on developing an eating disorder and it badly impacted on my overall mental and physical health. I either worked out like a maniac or not at all for months. Once I started working as a journalist and editor in Johannesburg in the early 20s, my pack-a-day smoking habit not only went with the whole newsroom vibe, but smoking worked like a charm to stay skinny, which was always on my mind so health was clearly not a driving factor in my life even when it came to exercise and this was all against the backdrop of that 1990s supermodel culture all right remember when that was a thing right cindy naomi claudia heidi they like they set this impossible standard that i could never reach no matter how hard i tried but try i did so I worked my tush off at the local gym, dressed in my shiny workout gear, doing step classes and running on the treadmill, listening to Madonna and Sten on my Walkman and then on my hot pink iPod, you know, because we're getting very fancy. I did not like to exercise, but I liked the results that exercise gave me. I still don't like to exercise. In fact, I call myself the movement coach who helped, who hates to exercise, but I now know what to do instead to get the same results. But each trip to the gym required loads of willpower. And the workouts were either punishment for what I had eaten or to burn calories for what I was about to eat. So let me know if you can relate to that kind of mindset. This was pretty much the status quo from about age 25 to 45. I was never satisfied with my shape forever on some diet or other feeling disappointed and shame when I gained weight because of a pregnancy or because I had allowed myself to indulge in about a comfort eating because, you know, life as a working mom was just so hard and overwhelming and Oreos made everything better. Um, then something would motivate me to get on track again, usually a New Year's resolution or an upcoming vacation or occasion, and I'd pull myself together long enough to hit the treadmill again and hit my goals again. But I knew all the time at the back of my head that I would eventually run out of willpower and that it wouldn't last. So physically, I looked okay, but emotionally, I was a wreck. All right, let's just say that there was a fair dose of self-loathing and envy of my friends who I believed had more willpower than me and seemed to be able to stick to these strict diet and gym routines without a problem. But we never really spoke about the mental or emotional toll of all this staying in shape was taking. Instead, we would talk about how we had been so good on our diets and exercise and how we were now being so bad on vacation because we were having a piece of cake. Let me know if you've ever heard yourself saying or thinking those words too. I worked out hard and I practiced and taught yoga to stretch my tight body that was stuck from being behind my computer all day and to try and find some, you know, balance in my life. And I did find centeredness at yoga, but that feeling of calm <laughs> did not last long because the reality of juggling my crazy work deadlines and the demands of my three young daughters soon shattered that kind of temporary post-yoga serenity, right? I celebrated when Oprah lost all that weight and I sat on the couch eating tomato chips and commiserating with Oprah when she gained it all back because I knew that pattern all too well. You see, 
I had a system. I knew what I needed to eat or not eat and how much I needed to exercise and sweat to see the changes I wanted. And then I turned 44, <laughs> okay? Just when I thought I had it all under control, the rules of the game suddenly changed. I was eating the same and exercising the same, but not seeing the results I expected. In fact, the more I exercised, the tighter my clothes got. And those nagging aches and pains that I've been dealing with, or rather trying to ignore for years, because, you know, no pain, no gain, they became unbearable. I couldn't run any longer because my plantar fasciitis was so bad. My hip pain kept me up at night. My calves and ankles ached in the morning, and I was forever putting my neck out and having to wear those ridiculous neck braces. And I dreaded, dreaded having to sit down at my computer to work because my back pain was excruciating. So, of course, I kept buying new office chairs, hoping that that would help, and it didn't. <laughs> and I was just so exhausted all the time. And then out of nowhere came the leaking. Okay what that I felt like I was falling apart and I was miserable and worried so I went for all the tests and scans and thankfully everything was fine medically speaking and the doctors and specialists pre prescribed me painkillers for my aches and of course kegels for the leaking and told me to exercise more let me know if you've ever been told that so I spent hundreds of dollars each month on what I now call my therapist carousel. You know, that cycle of regular physiotherapy, massage, acupuncture, osteopathy, chiropractor appointments, just endless, endless, endless. Now, the sessions did help me to manage my symptoms so that I could still do my part-time yoga teaching and I'd still sweat away on the elliptical trainer in the basement, which was the only cardio equipment I could use now because my body couldn't handle any type of pounding. My therapists were brilliant. They were, they really were, and I would always leave feeling better, but the pain and leaking would come right back a few days later. Let me know if that sounds familiar. <laughs> so I really, it just felt like it was downhill from here, and I was getting more and more depressed because I was just too young to feel so old. I was miserable and sore and I hated the way I looked and I just wanted to be able to exercise hard again because I believed that that was the only way to get my weight under control. And I just wanted to be able to look in the mirror and be happy with how I looked and confident that I was aging well. Because my late mom passed away at only 72 and I had seen her weight, health, and emotional struggles after menopause. And I was determined to break the cycle and show my daughters that it is possible to age well and strong and audaciously. Now, I didn't expect in my mid-40s to have the same figure as I had in my 20s, but I wanted to at least feel confident and attractive and spunky, you know, to look in the mirror each morning and like what I was seeing instead of starting my day off with this negative, like mean girl talk in my head and taking my bad mood out on everyone around me. I wanted to fit in my clothes instead of having to dress strategically to hide the lumps and bumps. And I wanted to not cringe when my husband touched me. And I also just wanted to not be so tired and sore all the friggin' time. I remember looking at my shiny pack of Jillian Michaels DVDs that I had just wasted money on because after a week of trying them, I had given up because I couldn't even do level one of the three level program. Okay. I was clearly too weak and old and unfit and all that jumping around was just terrible for my bladder and my back. So I remember packing away the DVDs and thinking to myself, I just wish someone would tell me what to do and I'll do it. Okay. I knew that I was missing something, but I had no idea what that was. But all the advice that I was getting from the doctors, personal trainers and shape magazine was like the same old, same old, eat less, exercise more. And I been there, done that, and the t-shirt didn't even fit me anymore. Worst of all, in my head, I still felt like I was 35, but my body was giving out, and I was only in my mid-40s. 
my work was going well, my marriage was good, my kids were happy, my future looked otherwise bright, but I felt like my body was just letting me down and I did not know what to do. 